wondering why I've, I'm still recovering. Last or yeah, last last Saturday, I went to Mixed Garage to the Tricks um, night. Well, I think I don't think it was his debut show in London. I think he's played before in London, but Tricks from Innovision, one of the newest signees, came and played uh, down at uh, at Mixed Garage, one of my favorite venues in East London, and it was probably one of my favorite club nights. Probably one of my most favorite club nights I've been to in a long time. Maybe in, maybe in a year. I think the anticipation obviously added to the whole event. I'm going to get it up on here so you guys can see. The anticipation probably added to the whole hype of the event, right? I was anticipating it for a while. Really looking forward to hearing someone from Innovision play at a place like Mix, a venue that I've kind of been to, you know, numerous times. You can see the post on my... Um, I've got various videos on this channel kind of describing my the times I've been there to see, you know, Dr. Rubenstein and a few other people play there. It's always been a really stellar time. But obviously, Tricks are somebody that I've been kind of curious about. Um, a friend and I kind of are big Innovision fanboys. We're a big fan of the label, a big fan of what they kind of do, big fan of Dixon, big fan of Arm. Um, you know, the whole gang we kind of root for. And um, Tricks has kind of been somebody we kind of stumbled upon. I'm going to say mainly because of Arm to Dixon, um, which is an Instagram page that I really recommend you guys check out. It's a really cool, like, a uh, fan page that essentially puts um, anything concerning Innovision is basically plopped on there. And I really recommend you check it out. Let me get up in the screen so you guys can see it. I think I, I discovered him through there. Pretty sure. Someone posted a clip of Tricks playing maybe at an Innovision label night or at Dixon set playing back to back or something. And then from there, I kind of showed my friend and we kind of, you know, discovered him and tried to go through his sets, find some productions here and there, some edits, whatever they may be. And then, of course, once you see the videos of him playing um, back to back or with or alongside Innovision, it all starts to make sense, right? They're very particular aesthetic. For the most part, they're all very much into designer clothing and all that sort of stuff. They play the same sort of kind of music, a lot of really cool indie dance edits, a lot of cool, um, I'm not, I don't know how you call it, atmospheric house or whatever you maybe call that sound, but there's a particular sound that they play similar to what Solomon would play, like the perfect sort of set you would hear maybe and I'd be for after hours, right? When the sun is setting, um, you got your hands in the air, smoking a cigarette, you don't even smoke surrounded by your best friends chilling that's the kind of best music they play but they're also very versatile that they can play in like a really you know small uh dark club somewhere in the depths of east london and still tear it to pieces that's why i think their versatility their versatility comes into play so this is the instagram page that i found them on arm to dixon um so it's ame to dixon's on instagram they post loads of innovation um centric stuff i think you've got a video here of tricks actually playing somewhere this is a club called vault Land, it looks like right that's doing it, that thing. so they've got loads of loads of videos here there's a video here of dixon obviously playing you can tell straight away it's here. It's and stuff and you've got another video here of dixon playing again in madrid so you, you kind of got the trick, right? so i kind of got uh, this this is basically effectively where i found out about tricks so we bought tickets a while back really much looking forward to it and again i think because of my four because of the sober october stuff I've kind of been a little bit, my tolerance has gone completely low when it comes to, you know, getting on it and being outside and having a bit of fun. So I, I think I was looking forward to it, but I was also a bit nervous about how I would um, sustain myself throughout the entire night. And if this is any indication of how the Innovision London label night is going to go, I'm probably going to need to do a lot of work internally to make sure I survive. So we get there about half 11. Um, we walk base we effectively get the train from Stratford to Hackney Wick and then pop down there. There's kind of hardly any queues to go inside mix. Mix security staff are fairly um cause on the outside, no intense forest searching, there's not not gonna stick a finger up your ass or anything. So that's that works out pretty well. Um get inside, little queue to kind of scan your tickets, some of the ladies at the front, and then you sort of effectively walk straight into the party. And if you've not been to Mix before, you would know that if you've not been to Mix before, the layout is essentially like a big warehouse. I think they usually store beer kegs and stuff in there from for the Crate Brewery or they have their own brewery in there that they kind of... And I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure they, they hold beer kegs in there towards the behind, basically be behind the DJ booths. So we're in there. Um, music is going off. And I think once we walk in, I think that's when Solar's playing because I think Trix played from 12 to 4. I'm pretty sure he had a four-hour set. Um, and Solo was banging. For the for the half an hour we heard him, I've never heard of who Solo is. I'm not really very familiar with Solo uh, beforehand. But having spoke to a couple of people who were in the party um, talking to us and kind of, you know, uh, you know, sharing our love of uh, Innovision, Solo is very much highly regarded amongst people. And according to RA, Solo is from the United States, it says here. He's also part one part of Sunset Sound System. 
And he also has a RA resident advisor mix number 459, it looks like. And obviously he plays, you know, at loads of other places too. So he's fairly on his way up too. I'm not sure if he's associated with Innovision loosely, if he signed on to them or if he produces with them or if he's just like a friend of the fam, a friend of the label. But regardless, he really did. He really played well. And I think it's... um. Um, I think it needs to be noted because I've long believed, I think we've kind of said it before, me and my friend, like, because we I've got a couple of playlists online where, you know, people post up tune IDs of stuff they hear Indivision DJs play. And I've always kind of been resist, hesitant or resistant to kind of like go and get those tunes myself and play them in my own DJ sets because I always get the impression that the Indivision sound is very hard to play without sounding like an Indivision copycat. The, the, even the, like there's stuff that you hear them play that only they could play in their sets i don't know how if you if it makes any sense to you guys but it's very hard to kind of uh take those songs and kind of make them work in your own set because naturally you're going to want to try and mix them the way they mix them you're going to try and make them sound sonically the way they the way it sounds sonically with them you're going to want to pitch it up or pitch down the way they do it there's certain things that just call for it because the reason why those songs sound good on their set list is because they've done those edits or they've made those adjustments that you've heard. So it's kind of hard to kind of, you know, um, take, it's kind of hard. I, I always imagine that it'd be kind of hard to play back to back with anyone from Indivision because they're so, they've got such a unique lasered in sound. It's hard to kind of, I don't know. It's probably easier for them to play back to back with anybody else, but it, it's not, it's probably harder the other way around. I would assume so. But Solar did really well. He really sounded different from anyone else I've heard in Indivision or associated with them, but still sounded within their pocket. Still had that similar sound in their pocket. And then, of course, the main man rocked up at about 12. By that time, we had a few drinks. We'd been dancing, uh, chilling out. And I have to say, that was probably one of the most funnest crowds I've kind of been um, around in uh, in Mix. For the most part, Mix Garage is pretty good good venue, I would say. Um, everyone's really chill. Everyone's got really good banter. Um Everyone just doesn't take themselves too seriously. Everyone's dancing as well. It's probably one of the rare venues in London where people are really packed up at the front in front of the DJ booth trying to, you know, throwing up signs, dancing, doing their thing. Hardly anyone being annoying and sticking a camera in the DJ's face. People are quite respectable in that regard. Um, and yeah, we just had loads of good crack, met loads of interesting people, met a lady that was um, supposedly involved with Innovision Label in terms of helping them tour. We met Trix's brother. We met a couple other dudes who are really cool and really loved them, Innovision too. So loads of kind of fanboys and fangirls around just kind of, you know, celebrating this occasion. And then of course, the main man rocks up. And um, I think... Firstly, in terms of aesthetic wise, I'm pretty sure he was wearing a Dries Van Noten shirt, the one with the sort of like swells on it. I'm pretty sure it was that, or it might have been um, what is what's the other brand? I'm pretty sure it's Dries Van Noten. It's got the little kind of paint brushes on it. I'm pretty sure it's Dries Van Noten. Should, should I check here and see if it was Dries? Yeah, let me check. Why not? It's a podcast, and it makes it more interesting. Let me see if I can find it. I'm pretty sure it's a Dries Van Noten shirt. Dries Van Noten. This is this is really important because the DJ set, but you know, it adds to the actual effect of things. Yeah, so I think it was one of these shirts. Let me see if I can find it. It's got the little swells on it, right? Um, ba, 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 ba. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, this one. I'm pretty sure it was something similar to this. I'm pretty sure. So, Dream Vendor with the print on it with the kind of swells. I'm pretty sure. But it was cut really short. It had a really interesting cut. It was sort of cut similar to like a Prada shirt. But even more, I think it was even shorter than. Oh, sorry. Police cars going by. I think the shirt was even shorter than the actual. Um, Prada shirt and a bit more of a boxier fit so it came up basically just above his navel um with some interest i think he had some um ec mackie pants on i'm not too sure if they were ec mackie as well but anyway he did the damn thing came on he had a rotary mixer and just absolutely tore it to pieces um and again just levels man absolute levels um it's it's always um it's always sobering and always um motivating and inspiring to be somewhere sobering inspiring yeah, it's it's always it's always very sobering, I'd say, and inspiring to be somewhere like a to be at a yeah, it's always sobering and inspiring to be at to be at a flipping to be at a place like that and to see someone like a tricks at that level playing because you're like, okay, cool, these are the levels, right? Um, I'm pretty sure he's probably younger than I am. Maybe he started later. I'm not too sure. Whatever it may be, but there is obviously I can obviously tell because I remember. When we were when we found out about Tricks beforehand through Arm to Arm or Arm to Dixon, sorry, we found out about him. I do remember um, going on his kind of SoundCloud or something and finding some mixes of his, right, and hearing them, and they were decent, right? They were, they were fairly good mixes, but nothing to shout home about, like just you know fairly decent mixes. But I'm pretty sure this whole summer that he spent touring with Indivision, playing back to back with Arm, playing back to back with Dixon, playing back to back with, you know 
I don't know whoever else they may play with. Maybe he did this. He went and played with Solomon, uh, DC Ten, all these other events that he played at. Right? I'm pretty sure those events have kind of leveled him up to an insane level. I'm pretty sure if you probably asked him, he'd probably say, "Yeah, I'm a far better DJ now than he probably was at the beginning of the year." And it really goes back to the adage of like iron sharpens iron. I'm I'm in no doubt that once you're surrounded by those kind of people, you're surrounded by that kind of level of commitment, determination. You've got someone like a Dixon on arm who, you know, two adult dudes who have their own families but are super hardworking. They're plucking tunes out from everywhere. They're listening to them. They're listening to demos. They're doing edits. They're constantly on the phone, tweaking performances, tweaking the sound, just being hardworking, guys. I'm pretty sure being that young, it would inspire you to just level up your game. And then once you come back to London and you come play at a small 500 capacity club in the middle of East London, you're going to tear it to pieces. It's just not fair. And that's what it felt like. It felt like it, would, it just wasn't a fair set. Like he was absolutely shelling, like, like, and again, it was a, it was an expert set that it was so, it was the kind of set that was so good that you, I kind of felt, I kind of um, didn't want to go to the toilet. I was kind of rushing, running back to the dance floor every time he was playing. I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave the dance floor too long, and we stayed right until the end. It was just an epic, 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 epic set, man. Like the sound, everything, the 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 visual, sorry, the 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 lighting guy at the top was absolutely killing it too um that was really cool i love i love the light show that they put on behind it whoever invested that money in it i'm not sure if it's something that makes do themselves or if it's something the promoter has to do on their own but that was awesome um yeah just everything about it was flipping cool and honestly it was lit. it was and i think part of the reason why it was so good was because the crowd was amazing they like i've always maintained you know maybe 60 percent or maybe even 70 percent of a club night is um you know, relies heavily on the people that actually go to the clubs. I think that's a, probably the main reason why a place like I don't know, um, uh, what, what what do they call that place in Pippin Dawson? Damn it, the Dawson Kings and the the kind of queer club just above. It's got the dancers and upstairs. I've got I've got the name of it, but that's one of the clubs there. I still think is you know has got quite a big pool. People still go there every week. There's places like that in London that exist because obviously there's not many because most of the you know smaller clubs have shut down we've only left with kind of mega clubs but some of the smaller venues some of the smaller capacity venues in london the only way they can survive and actually thrive and actually you know have a good atmosphere is if they have the right amount of people in there or the, the right type of people in there and it's quite hard to do it nowadays because you know people age out people age out of clubs people move away people end up kind of raising families people just get disinterested with the scene so you have a whole new gaggle of people coming in right and it's hard to kind of cultivate a scene when people are just changing, you know, every four years or so. But I think what Mix does a good thing of is that firstly, probably they probably have a high threshold or they probably have a high, a really long criteria in terms of who the promoters are, in terms of who, the, who can come in and do a show there. They probably have to, you know, could we have to kind of jump through a lot of hoops to kind of get a show on there in the first place. And the people that are putting shows on there, judging by the past performances, you kind of have to bring it. You can't get away with just booking like a regular, schmegular, you know, lowest hanging fruit person. If you want to make that thing work, and plus because of Mix's, Mix Garage's location, you know, it's not necessarily on a busy high street. It's in the middle of Hackney Wick. Um, you have to know it to know it kind of thing. If you haven't been to the crate or you haven't been to the yard, you probably won't know it exists. Um, and again, it's a bit out of the, it's a bit out of, it's a bit out of the way for some people, depending, but not, probably not for a lot, but you know, you still have to maybe get an Uber home, two buses home. It's not, it's a bit of effort that's required. So you really have to ace the, the promotion beforehand, marketing it, and also maybe the lineup so people can actually go to their destination to go. And I think the timing of that place works really well too, because I think it's open from like 10 to four for the most part. So those are the perfect um, window to kind of get to a place like Hackney Wick. Because you'd want to get there before 12 so you can get the train. You don't want to get there. Yeah, you, you wouldn't want to get to mix um, outside of the train window, right? Because it'd just be a hassle to get there. So you want to get there before the train gets there. And also you want to leave before, you know, the sun rises and shit. So it's the perfect amount of time to get there. And again, the club is probably, you know, layout wise, really cool. Just one big square. They've got a like little mezzanine, 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 mezzanine place thing at the top, whatever, balcony, whatever you call it. Um, which was incredibly warm. I'm not sure why it was so warm up there, but it was. That's where the, the lighting dude was doing his damn thing, but it was too warm to stay up there for the most part. People were going up there. Then they've obviously got the smoking area on the outside and, and a little alleyway just be, just to, to the side of the club. Uh, but the main action is in the front and then, you know, behind the gate where the DJ is probably to his left. 
um, is a kind of, I don't know, quote unquote VIP bit that people were kind of popping in and popping out of. But again, usually that spot would be reserved for all the wankers and stuff, but everyone was cool. The VIP people that were standing there were cool. All the industry peeps I met were safe. The bartenders were safe. The security guards were safe. It was just a really safe environment. The people at the cloakroom were safe. It was just a really cool environment. I fucking loved it, man. Honestly, easily one of my best nights I've had in London for a while. Um, again, Tricks actually smashed it. Solar again. I've, you know, you've, you've got a brand new fan in me. I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on him and seeing what he does. And again, um, I really recommend you check out Innovision. Um, the next night we're going to go to probably is the in- no, definitely going to is the Innovision label night in London and Fold. That's happening in a couple of weeks, so definitely check that out if you haven't checked it out already. I'm pretty sure tickets are sold out for that one, but just keep an eye out on Ticket Swap. Keep an eye out on the Facebook group. You probably might be able to get a ticket um, last minute. There's always people that drop out, always people that, you know, I can't go now or something come up. Or something always has to come up, right? Usually people that are just trying to resell and didn't be able to get any money for it, but I really recommend you get a ticket to see these guys play because it's it's really different. I think sometimes it's different. It, you kind of get a bit jaded when you go to these kind of events. You kind of feel like you've seen everything. There's nothing new under the sun. But I think sometimes the ability to see a DJ of this level of proficiency, especially somebody that young in trick, to be to to see him shelling that well, and and again, I heard I heard his sets before I knew, I heard his sets prior to this event, right? So in the beginning of the year, the beginning of the summer, and you can honestly tell in the four months that I've kind of he's kind of been away touring, living the lavish life, he has improved tenfold. And again, iron sharpens iron. There's no doubt about it. So if ever there was a case for smaller DJs feeling as if they haven't got a looking and then you know we're not getting the chance that we need I think you have to respect that sometimes there are just people that are just much better at this DJ thing than you um they're just levels and levels above what we're doing at the moment and sometimes as well it's very important to somehow I'm not sure how it's possible to do but if you're not becoming DJ it might be important it might be a good way to kind of get better is to maybe get friendly with promoters and kind of volunteer your warm-up DJ um uh your warm-up DJ services for free like I would be, I'll, I think I'd be willing to do that more than happy to go and warm up DJ for a big person for free, just so I can have the the ability to like stand behind the decks and watch them do what they do, you know, see them beforehand, maybe when they go for dinner with a promoter, see how they kind of carry themselves, all that, all those things kind of really add to kind of, uh, is number one, kind of making you back, come, like, the, the day after the Tricks event, I came back and you know, I, I probably made two mixes that I haven't uploaded yet, but I just came back and started downloading songs, buying stuff. Like I was just super inspired. So I can only imagine what it must do to you when you're hanging around that kind of level of caliber of DJ, flying around with them, hearing them talk about the industry, hearing them talk about electronic music, hearing them talk about dance music culture, hearing them just, you know, just being gross in a scene. It's only going to rub off on you. Um, and I can imagine that could be, that's probably leaps and bounds different level to kind of, you know, hanging around people in the kind of open deck scene who are just complaining about 100 quid they haven't received from a shaggy promoter. It's not necessarily the most inspiring place to be. So I think it has to be an understanding that as much as it is important to kind of hustle on the ground level, you really have to put yourself in the mixer and surround yourself with these elite people. But again, like I said, um, mix is my favorite venue. Um, they smashed it. Uh, this promoter that put it on, who are they? Uh, Tricks Correct. Okay, it was actually his label now, I'm assuming. Larry who? What does it say here? Labyrinth. Uh, Labyrinth Promotions at Mixed Garage. Again, an amazing night. Tricks and Solar, back to back. Absolutely killed it. Solar, I'm guessing for two hours. Tricks for four hours. Absolutely disgusting, dirty, um, dance-filled, sweaty occasion. Oh, actually the sweat too. Um, I think they've improved the aircon. I'm going to say they've improved the aircon. Mix was cool as hell. Like the last time I went there, which was, no, one of the most sweatiest times I went was when I went to go to Pussy Palace. I went to Pussy Palace at, at, at Mix for probably like three or four times in a row. And it was so sweaty. It was just insane. Like my t-shirt was dripping. Um, I literally had to kind of ring dry it in the toilet a couple of times, which is, you know, super nasty. I know if you're eating and you're drinking something, I apologize, but that's the truth. So um, yeah, we, we, they've improved the air conditioning. It's a bit hot up top, but you know, you got to do what you have to do. So I really recommend you check out Mix, one of my favorite venues in London. Tricks again, one of my, one of my favorite DJs now, a new favorite and Solar. I've got two new favorite guys that I'm kind of following at the moment and individual label night coming up at Fold very, very soon. So make sure you Google that, find that. If you can get some tickets, definitely recommend you to go.